First up, wow, I cannot believe how well the channel's done over the last week. It is absolutely mind blowing. And the wife is sick to death of me giving her constant updates on you guys subscribing to the channel. So thank you. This week, I'm back with three more upgrades to your workshop. Tiny little upgrades made from scrap just to try and organize this place a little bit more. It's getting better, but it's a long way off. To make my omelette though, I'm gonna to have to break some eggs. I wanna redo this whole workbench. It was here when I bought the house and it's pretty useless, but I can't do anything with it until I've cleared this stuff. So that's gonna be my mission today. I wanna to create a home for everything here to live more permanently. It's gonna be easy, it's gonna be cheap, it's gonna be quick, it's gonna be dirty. Let's see what we can knock up. First thing on my list is somewhere to put these more permanently. These little kits cost absolute pennies off Amazon. I'll post a link in the description. I got mine from Aldi Middle Isle, but these are the sort of things that one of my subscribers commented on. It's cheaper to buy these than it is to try and make them out of wood. And actually, they'd be too chunky out of wood. So I'm gonna make a permanent home from these out of some scraps of pallet. We'll do that first. I am using pallet wood. I'm not even bothering to plane it down or anything. I'm literally just cutting this to length now the length you need will depend on the space you've got. I want mine to go from my French cleat system, if you like, all the way to the wall. So I'm cutting it to that length. I wanna say at this point that this is not a tutorial video. This is not me trying to make something that looks amazing and it's gonna look like some kind of studio that you often see on woodworking channels. I am making something that focuses on function over form. I'm working with what I've got. I don't want to spend any money. I am purely trying to use the scraps I've got to organize my life a little bit more. I can't give you any measurements because I'm working around wiring on the wall. That's why I'm using two vertical battens with some cross battens going around each side because I can't do anything with the wires. Well, I could pay someone, but I don't like paying someone. This is going to be held together with glue and screws Nothing's planed, nothing's sanded. To save time, I am using some premium, if you like, screws. The screw I'm showing you at the minute, you'll notice right at the tip of it has got a kind of groove out of it. This is a self-driving screw. The idea behind it is that you can just screw it. You don't need to pre-drill. It cuts through the wood without splitting it. They are amazing if you're feeling a bit lazy like me. While this Muppet on screen is throwing that together, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you for all the support that's been shown over the last week. It's been truly amazing to watch the channel grow for what I can see has been no reason. I'm just putting out videos like I have been doing, but for whatever reason, YouTube has loved us this week. Now, I never said this was going to be advanced woodworking, but this is my frame. Now the reason I'm going for the same style as my previous shelf is because I have got wires on that back wall that I've got to build around. Now I could have encased them and made them look pretty but this is a workshop. I'm building from pallets. So the next thing to do is to actually put these strips on. Now these are not high quality. So the plastic ones are for the smaller containers and then there is a metal one, although it's not the best quality anyway, for the bigger ones. All I've got to do is attach these and then it can go up on the wall. Easy fix and it's taken 15 minutes. Do it. And that's all I did. I just put some screws through, shallow ones this time so nothing gets attached to the workbench and then they were ready to be mounted. Now I got this kit from Aldi as I mentioned earlier in the video but I will post a link on Amazon to a few that I've seen. They look near enough identical but these kits are kind of all the same. I imagine the more you pay, the more structurally sound these brackety things are that I'm attaching at the minute will be. You get to see my athleticism here where I pretend that I'm Spider-Man because I'm actually a child. But on top of the workbench, all I'm gonna do is screw these in using three wood screws at the top. There's actually a wooden batten that runs across the top of those breeze blocks. After that, I'll come back through and I'll put some stainless steel screws straight into the breeze blocks. They're actually concrete screws. They are quite expensive, but I've had them knocking about for ages and I use them to put some windows in our house. 
So I thought, why not use them? So just like that, 20 minutes, and I've got a permanent place for these. The reason I wanted to do that is because I want this bench to actually be free space. I don't want it to clutter up. We'll see how that goes. The only thing that I would suggest next is actually putting labels in these. Because I've put it in the corner, I need to see what it is so I can just take it off and take it to where I need to work with. I've left this section here completely free. Really simple. Let's go on to the next tip. My next storage upgrade is in this same spot. And this is kind of like a mental thing rather than a show you how to do thing. Your workshop doesn't have to look perfect. Function over form every time. If you've got an old little fence post bracket that you've got left over from doing some fencing, well, is it a fence post bracket or is that now a place where you can hang your saw? Use whatever you've got. Hang stuff on nails, hang stuff on screws, fence bracket, whatever it is, find a place to store all the things. It doesn't need to look fancy. I'm doing this whole YouTube gig and my workshop looks like chaos. I think I'm gonna feature a giant cobweb on my head in all future videos. That thing was there for an hour and I didn't notice. I'm also putting a little nail up for a sieve. It might seem like a weird workshop edition, but it's really good for sifting through sawdust to get the fine stuff to mix with glue and fill any nail holes. Number three, this one has been bugging me for a while. Everybody knows that my favorite tool is the track saw. But these tracks, although they come in a nice carry bag, I never put them back in the bag. I just lean them up against things and always trip over them. And it does damage the little rubberized bit on the edge. I haven't really got a place to store them, so let's make one. And make one I did. Now I'm not gonna show this in great detail because it's not gonna take a rocket scientist to figure out what I did. But I did make this out of some old fence posts and a couple of bits of pallet wood. All I did was make a frame. Now the idea is that I'm gonna try and store these in the ceiling. In my garage, I've got the rafters above me and it is a complete wasted space. I'm running out of room to put things on the wall because of the two garage doors. So I figured, why not put it in the roof? Why not? This frame is gonna be hinged to one of the rafters in the roof. So I've used my old fence pickets and, oh, there he is. And a couple of bits of pallet wood. Then I'm literally gonna put the hinges on and then it's gonna kind of fold down from the roof. Now at this point, I will warn you, I haven't even thought about how it's going to attach to the roof. I know it's gonna be hinged on one side, but the other part, I haven't figured out yet. But I knew this was something that I wanted to do. So I'm just using a little bit of wood glue and a few nails, screws, screws are the things you use the screwdriver for, and I'm gonna just throw it all together. Again, this is something that you could make really pretty if you use a bunch of plywood, there are no plans as such for stuff like this, but you can make it what you want to be. The hinges I'm using are actually kind of the garden-y gate hinges, but smaller. I don't even know why I've got them. I've never used them before, I just found them in the garage. At this point I hadn't really thought about the depth of the rafters, so they're actually not going to fit. But I make it work. Okay, to get these to fit into the rafters, I did have to do a little engineering. Use my hands. That's what I've got. Now would one of those butt style brackets, <laughs> butt, have been better? Maybe. But, that's what I had. This is the first time this year I've been a bit too hot in the garage. I'm in a t-shirt. So, I'm not going to overcomplicate this. I was thinking of all kinds of things with strings and pulleys, but I can actually touch the rafters. Why do I need strings and pulleys? I'm just gonna use a bit of rope and a hook. <sighs> Simple, stupid. Okay, of course, it's my video, so I had to mess up in some way. I can reach the rafters to hook this on if I hadn't put the fixing point above my workbench. So after this video, I might go and put these somewhere where it's a bit easier for me to get to. But the idea in principle massively works. I've got somewhere to store these. For now, I am gonna to have to use a ladder. Still, that's another thing to kick all over the place. Simples. So that's it guys. Three more really simple, really cheap, really quick storage ideas for your garage or workshop or shed or wherever you call your home. 
If you've got anything out of this video, I would really appreciate you taking time to like or subscribe or even comment. The people down in my comment section are so helpful. So if you've got any questions at all, please just ask. I'll get back to you. They'll get back to you. Take care. Love you.